A common worry during pregnancy is the risk of infections, and especially with the coronavirus epidemic, influenza, and many other infections around, it's easy to worry about how much your risk of infection has gone up because of pregnancy. In this video, I'm going to explain the way pregnancy affects your immune system and how worried you should really be. I'm Dr. Omar, welcome to my channel, and just as a reminder, this is not medical advice. This is purely for educational and entertainment purposes. Pregnancy can be one of the most beautiful times in a woman's life, but at the same time, the risk of infections and other results of the changes in the immune system can result in tragic outcomes during pregnancy. You may have heard of how pregnancy causes some kind of immunosuppression or decreased immune system functioning. So I'd like to explore with you a little more in detail about how the immune system actually changes during pregnancy and whether you might be at risk for particular infections and how worried you should be. There's a lot of misconceptions out there, and I hope presenting some of this science will help clarify things for you. In general, the immune system faces a dilemma. The mom's immune system is normally functioning, hopefully, before pregnancy, and then as the fetus develops, this entity is genetically and immunologically unique and different as a human being as it develops throughout pregnancy. This poses a dilemma for the mom's immune system. As you can see here, the developing fetus has its own local environment as well as its systematic connection to the mom's body. And in general, this dilemma for the mom's immune system as well as the developing fetus's immune system can be posed as follows. The mother's immune system has to not be too strong, otherwise it could overreact to the fetus and attack it or reject it, just as if the fetus was a foreign pathogen of some kind, or even a cancer. And if mom's immune system is too weak, then actual infections and pathogens could hurt mom and baby. So full-on immunosuppression would be too strong. Now, full immunosuppression refers to things like if you're on immunosuppressive drugs, for example, say you had an organ transplantation, you have to take medications that suppress your immune system systemically all over the body, that would be too strong. Or if you have HIV, you have systemic immunosuppression, that would be too strong. If mom doesn't have any immunosuppression, that would be too weak. So something like a compromise has been worked out by design. There's a mild immunosuppression, and there's some truth to this fact. However, as we'll see, this is too simple. There are a number of complications and subtleties to this story of what's happening to the immune system. There are dynamic changes in the immune system, and these changes are responsive to the local environment of the developing fetus and the circumstances that mom is facing throughout pregnancy. So it's not as though there's just general constant immunosuppression during pregnancy, uh, although this was once a common understanding in the medical field. Responses by the immune system are both systemic and highly local and dynamic and responsive. And I'll explain a little more about what that means. We know that part of the quote-unquote immunosuppression that happens is that something called the innate immune system actually gets stronger during pregnancy. These include certain cells like monocytes and NK cells, but other parts of the immune system, the adaptive immune system, actually become weaker during pregnancy. These include B and T cells. And in terms of how the immune system is dynamic and responsive, we know that in the first trimester, mom's immune system is actually going towards a pro-inflammatory state. And that might be confusing because you might think inflammation is bad. The pro-inflammatory state actually helps implantation and the placental growth for the fetus. Now during the second trimester, mom's immune system goes towards an anti-inflammatory mode and that's gonna help with fetal growth. And then again in the third trimester, inflammation goes back up and this helps prepare for labor and delivery. So it's a complicated picture. Here's a uh, more detailed picture that can help explain some of these changes. As you can see here, the first trimester, the main challenge is implantation of the developing blastocyst and fetus into the uterus. And inflammation actually helps. During the second trimester, fetal growth is the issue and anti-inflammation helps. And the third trimester, inflammation goes back up. It's a little bit of a complicated picture, but I think you get the point. Generally speaking, a woman who's pregnant does have higher vulnerability to a number of viruses, and these can cause a lot of damage both to mom and baby. Here are some examples. Cytomegalovirus, 
varicella zoster virus, rubella virus, herpes, HIV, all kinds of hepatitis, Ebola, influenza, and Zika virus, and various changes in pregnancy, congenital defects, miscarriages, spontaneous abortions, microcephaly, all kinds of nasty stuff that we want to try to avoid. So generally, we know that pregnant women and developing fetuses are at a higher vulnerability to a number of viruses in particular. So that is something we know. So despite those dynamic changes, there are some global vulnerabilities to be mindful of. In addition, the pregnant woman and baby are especially vulnerable to respiratory system infections. During the influenza pandemics, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic, we see much higher mortality in women when they're pregnant than women of similar demographics and circumstances when they're not pregnant. Some reasons why might be that the uterus gets expanded upwards, lungs become more restricted. So as lungs are more restricted, uh, airflow is minimized and then breathing out and breathing in gets more difficult. So any pathogens get more easily incorporated into the lung tissue. Finally, estrogen and progesterone do lead to more edema or fluid in the upper respiratory tracts and that makes things a lot easier for pathogens like viruses to reproduce and take over. So we definitely recommend pregnant women to watch out for respiratory viruses and other infections of the respiratory system. Luckily, there are specific adaptations that have been designed so that the woman when she's pregnant can avoid certain risks of pathogens. Very commonly, we all know about pregnancy sickness, including nausea, vomiting, and various other symptoms. Evolutionary biologists have described how pregnancy sickness is a adaptive compensation to avoiding infection risk. What's interesting about this is that the exact pattern of nausea and aversions and cravings match the periods of greatest fetal vulnerability, meaning the times in which the developing fetus is most vulnerable to the effects of infection are also the times when mom tends to have the highest burden of those symptoms. Number two, the foods with the highest pathogen risk historically in our ancestral past, which would have been meat, for example, are also the kinds of entities that tend to trigger these specific kinds of aversions. And that's really interesting. We have an explanation for why this characteristic suite of responses during pregnancy makes certain sense adaptively. Sometimes sicknesses aren't always random. There's often a reason why we get sick, which might have an adaptive function in low level quantities. This is one good example. In conclusion, yes, pregnant women do have a greater vulnerability for infections, especially infections of the respiratory system and viruses. And these can be incorporated into the mom's body and the baby's developing body and can have dire drastic consequences for miscarriage and other problems. But it's important to remember that pregnancy is not just the same as being globally immunosuppressed, like having an organ transplantation and being on immunosuppressive drugs or having HIV. So something in between those two extremes will probably make more sense. It's important to consider your risk tolerance and what kind of activities you want to keep in your life versus cautiously restrict. Also remember, these changes are not systematic, but rather dynamic, local, and responsive to development. And there are natural designed adaptations that protect mom and baby from the risk of infections, such as pregnancy, sickness, and nausea. Here's some references which will be pasted into the description of the video. And please let me know if you have appreciated and enjoyed and learned from this video, because if you like this video, I'll make more videos like it. And if you want to make sure not to miss out on future content like this, please subscribe. Thank you so much.